Gallup has done a poll about the last 10 years, and they've asked a question is, what do you think is the most honest and ethical profession in our country? And then when they say that, they, they, they clarified that it says the profession and the peoples in the profession. So would you venture to guess which is the worst or the least ethical or the least honest profession that's out there? You might, what's that? Well, lawyers are low, but nothing compared to a used car salesman, right? Because you know that the used car salesman is speaking truth about what's really going on in this car, right? Uh, they, they rate this, the numbers that they give on this are based on if someone said that, that this profession and people that they know in this profession are very high in their honesty and ethics or high. 9% for used car salesmen. Can you guess what the, the number one is? Nurses. Spoken by a nurse. <laughs> but it's true. Nurses have been the number one for years now. 85% of people say nurses are high, very high to high in that. In fact, the whole medical profession is about two-thirds. Lawyers are a little bit lower than that. Lawyers are at 22%. Clergy? Clergy, well, they're better than lawyers. But we're at 40%. That's a sad, I mean, for Pastor Todd and I to grapple with that one, that's tough. I get it because of all the things that have gone in our culture, but it's just not right. That, that, that people uh, in our profession, and uh, that, that ha- they have lowered it to 40%. Members of Congress and senators, they're just a shade below insurance salesmen. 12 to 13 percent is what our culture says. I say all that to say that my guess is is that our view of honesty and ethics and personal integrity is not very strong in the United States. We don't see it in others. We don't value it to the point that we demand that. We don't demand it of ourselves. You don't see people sort of trying to say that but we learned to twist the truth, share part of the truth. We found all these different phrases to get around it. I think we can understand that we live in this culture. But would it surprise you that, that Jesus lived in a similar culture? That, that, that the cultural values of honesty, personal integrity, were about as low as in our day and age. I want you to listen to what he has to say in the Sermon on Mount about speaking the truth and following through with what you have to say. He says this in, in Matthew 5, in the text we have. Again, you have heard to, said, that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. There's the end quote. Jesus is quoting some Old Testament passages there, not any specific, but a sort of a summary of them. He says, but I say to you, Do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it's the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool. Next slide. Or by Jerusalem, for it's the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. So what's going on here? So, When Jesus quotes the Old Testament, the Old Testament is very clear. Do what you say. That that what God asks of us is that we we do the right, that what we say, we we do it. We're honesty. We have personal integrity. He says, you don't need an oath to do that. The reason why we need oaths or or promises or legal language is because we don't trust the person that they're going to follow through with what they have to say. And an oath is simply just bringing God into the equation and the arrangement. I swear to God. It's the honest truth. And so the, the, the Old Testament is very clear on that. But what the, the teachers of that day and age started to do is they started to make these elaborate rules of how you could get out of 
what you said you would do. That they, that they, they created these elaborate rules and structures so that you don't have to be accountable. You don't have to be reliable. And so they said, well, if you swear by heaven, well, that's a little bit better than swearing by earth. Or you could swear by the temple or, 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 or something else. They would do this and say, well, if you swore by the temple, then you're not really bound to that the way you would be if I swore to God. And they would do the same thing on, on the body, too, as you heard, is, which we used to do is cross my heart and hope to die. That they would say these things because they were trying to get out of what they really said. So bad is this that he brings it up again in Matthew 23. He says, Woe to you blind guides who said, If anyone swears by the temple, it is nothing. But if anyone swears by the gold of the temple, oh, he's bound by his oath. You blind fools. For which is greater, the gold or the temple that has made the gold sacred? And then it goes on and says, and you say, if anyone swears by the altar, it's nothing. But if anyone swears by the gift that's on the altar, oh, he's bound by his oath. You blind men, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? So whoever swears by the altar swears by it and by everything on it. And whoever swears by the temple swears by it and by him who dwells in it. And whoever swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by him who sits upon it. So you can see all this elaborate structure that was going on here because they just didn't want to speak the truth. They wanted to get out about what they said. And there was the, sh- we call this shady, right? Someone who's shady, who's untrustworthy, who reneges on their promises. And they had this elaborate structure there to do it, that the religious leaders came up with a structure so that you could get out of what you promised you would say. It's kind of like what we used to do. Like, remember, you'd put your, you'd cross your fingers and put them behind your back whenever you'd say something. Ah, got you. So Jesus' answers to this is very simple. He says, "Let your yes be yes and your no be no." He says, it's not about oaths. It's not about making agreements. It's about why would you have to do that? He says, what matters is our personal integrity. That we would be truthful. That we would be honest. That we would do what we say we will do. That we will follow through. That we would, what we said we would do, we will do. And what we do is what we say. There's no difference there. Or you could put it, the, Horton the elephant said, I meant what I said, I said what I meant. An elephant is faithful 100%. That we're to be truthful and faithful in what we say. Now before I get into what does that look like in our lives, I want to get back to our culture a bit. Because What struck me last week as Pastor Wayne was preaching about divorce is that his culture that he lived in in his day is not much different than ours. We sometimes have this romantic view of, oh, back in Jesus' day, everything was good. No, it wasn't. So you say that a guy can just write write like a certificate of divorce right there on the spot and go to someone else? Just throw out his wife and, yeah, no, you don't have a home anymore. I got someone else now. That's terrible. How much different than today? And so what's important is, what does Jesus have to say to us about how we engage and interact with our culture? Because Jesus is speaking into a culture just like ours. And he's saying, here's the way I want you to respond and live in relation to a culture that's like this. So the first thing he could say is that we are to be different than our culture. There was this, this move that, that was amongst churches for a while, and it's still there, which would say is be like the culture because that's attractive to them. That if you're, if you're sort of like them, that the thinking is, well, they'll be like, oh, they're just like me. And they'll find that attractive. No. 
What Jesus says is we are to be different. He doesn't say figure out all the rules of how you make oaths and do your best with them. He says simply this, live out my kingdom ways. Live out my kingdom rules. Be different. Live knowing that God is in the midst of all those conversations and you have to answer to God with all those conversations. And so the first thing we can say is that we are to live different than the culture. And not just different to be different, but we are to live out the kingdom ways. That if we're living out the kingdom ways, that will be different than our culture. And let me just say that will be attractive to our culture. The second thing we can say about this is don't compare yourselves to the culture. Jesus doesn't say, well, if you're just a little bit better than the culture, that will be good. So oftentimes we compare ourselves. Well, we're just not as bad as, as this. Well, clergy are only 40%. We're not as bad as the, the, the senators and the members of Congress that are 12 to 13. And clergy should be above nurses. So the, the, what he's saying is don't, don't just compare and say, well, I'm not as bad Again, live to the standard that the kingdom that he has for his kingdom ways. Not kingdom ways, then world's ways, and you just live a little bit better towards that. It says live the kingdom ways. And then third is, is that the kingdom ways are the best thing for our culture as well. That that what Jesus is saying here is that this isn't just how we are to live, but he's speaking into a culture. He says the best thing for this culture is to be truthful and to be honest. The best thing for our culture is to strengthen our marriages. The best thing for our culture is to avoid anger. All these things, he's, he's picking the right, he's saying this is how the best way we can be for our culture and the best thing for our culture are these kingdom ways. And so we are to live them out, but also to speak to them and say, this is the way we are to live with others and instruct people in that because it will be the best way for them to live. And man, we have a lot of room to grow on this. But we are to work at it and continue to work at it to, be, to live out the kingdom ways. Now what does he speak about with, with honesty? And following through. So let's follow the logic here. Jesus says that we are to be salt and light into the community. What does it mean to be salt and light into the community in regards to honesty and following through with what we have to say? It's very clear. Let your yes be yes and let your no be no. He says, let me be very clear about this. It's going to be simple and straightforward. First thing we can say is be truthful. Period. Be truthful. You're to speak the truth, nothing but the truth, and the whole truth. Now, one of the things where this comes in is that one of the things you might be thinking is, well, what happens if I'm being truthful and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make a... a, a, a an arrangement, an agreement with someone who's shady. What do I do? Do I just simply say, okay, I'll take your word for it? This, what Jesus is speaking about here is not about that. He's speaking about our own integrity, our own personal integrity. He'll later say, don't throw your, I, I would put this under, don't throw pearls to the swine. That you are to write agreements with that. Why? To keep everyone accountable to say what they would have to do. But you shouldn't have to have that, is the point. But also when we're truthful, we have to be careful who we're sharing the truth with at times. So last week we talked about divorce. You probably know of some stories about divorce and you know the truth about what happened. That doesn't mean just because you know the truth that you share it with other people. That you just say, well, let me give you the real deal here. Because that could be similar to throwing those pearls to swine. 
that, that we are to be truthful, but we're to be careful who we share the truth with because of what they might do with the truth. I, I don't mean, it's weird Derek being nuanced about the truth when he says be truthful, let your yes be yes and your no be no. But at the end of the day, the truth is your friend. Sometimes we, 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 we are afraid to tell the truth because we, what others, someone might think about it or, or, or they might get nervous about it. The truth is your friend. And so be truthful about things. That to, to be truthful knowing that God is listening in. And the reason why people create oaths in the first place is because your reputation isn't strong enough to that you would follow through with what you say. So first and foremost, be truthful. The second thing that we could say is, be careful what you promise. Now, there's a number of different reasons why they created oaths, or why people would create oaths in this elaborate structure of oaths. Does it frustrate you when you go to the doctor's office for your 10 o'clock appointment and it's 10.45 and you're still waiting to get in? Maybe it doesn't frustrate you. It frustrates me. Why? Well, because the doctor's office overpromised what they said they could do with all the people that were there. Now, I know none of us would do something like that. But we have to be careful with what we promise. That, that it, we... It, they, we can't overpromise everything. And, and that's why they, they, that this was going on in part those days is because they were overpromising. And so first be careful what you promised. The second thing is you can say no. That if someone says, hey, can you do this with me? You can say no. Let's say it all together. No, it's a good word. But sometimes we don't want, we just want to please others. Sometimes we, we want to look good on a certain way to say, I'm not backing on. So we just need to be, we have to say no at times. We have to be careful about what we promise. We have, to, we have to make sure that we're, and then finally I would say the last thing is we need to be clear about what we are promising. I know it never happens in relationships that someone is thinking something, but they don't share what they're thinking. Never happened. But we have to be clear with what we're promising. That, that, that there's no nuance here. That we say, okay, I'm going to promise to meet you at this time. And so when we're saying be, be clear about your promises, be clear about what you are promising, and don't overpromise. And then finally what I could say is follow through with what you've promised. Do all that you can to follow through on what you've promised. We want, to have, we want to build this character of reliability and trustworthiness in what we say. And if we said that we were going to do something, we need to follow through and do it because it goes into the essence of our character. It goes into, are we living like the king? Remember, we have a God who is truth. We, we, the Holy Spirit who's in us, who is the spirit of truth. And we follow Jesus, who is the truth. And so we need to follow through with what we say. And, and do all that we can. Now, I'm sure as you're thinking, because I've been thinking, I'm thinking of all the things that I promised I would do for family members, for friends, for others where, hey, we'll get together and we'll do this. And, and the intentions are real. But to follow through on those things. Rather than have a nuance, well, I didn't really mean it that way, which is a nuanced series of oaths. And so follow through with what you promise. It's intriguing to me that going back to this issue, Jesus is saying what our culture needs is truthfulness, is personal integrity in all that we say and we do. In other words, he's not picking and saying, oh, let's talk about this, let's talk about that. He's saying to the culture, how can you be salt and light into this world? It's about our relationships. 
It's about our honesty. It's about anger. It's about retaliation a little bit later. He's not, he's not just picking things in general. He's picking things specific. And f- so it begins with us being truthful, doing what we promise. Because we want to be someone who's reliable. Who someone says, well, he's a believer. Of course he would be reliable. Because our character is that way as well. Would you join with me as we pray together? And as I do, the, the wind team can come up. Oh, Lord, we thank you that we think about the fact that our lives are dependent on your truth. That we live knowing that what you say you will do. That what you promise you will fulfill. And, and we use words like faith and have faith and waiting and all these things because we know that you're going to follow through with what you say. Lord, we know that if you say something for us to do something, it's for our good. Why? Because we rely on what you say. And we know that what you say is true. Your words are true. Lord, we thank you that you are that to us. And we want to be that to others. We want to resemble you in all that we do and in all that we say. Lord, help us to do that. That our lives would reflect you. Lord, if we are caught into a place where we have lied, we've been dishonest, would you help us to rebuild that character? Would you help us to turn it around and say, I'm going to start living this way. Give us the strength to do it. Would you help us to have that that gentle um, spirit that recognizes that when we're we're going to say something wrong, that we're just lying to ourselves as well and to you? Speak to us, Lord. You are the God who speaks. And help us to be the people that that others can look to and say they're honest. They're, they're, They're truthful in all that they say and do. That we would not be shady in any way. That people wouldn't have to be worried around us because they would, they would know that we're, we're, we would follow through with what we promise. Lord, give us strength to do this. We thank you and love you. Amen.